I was initially going to make this video about the top 5 offensive lines going into the 2020 season, but the other day, Chris Jones got a contract extension from the Chiefs, with the Chiefs, and everyone was kind of like, what in the world? How do these guys have enough money? Well, it seems uh, Chris Jones already was under contract for 2020, so even though they had $6 left of cap, they already had Chris Jones under contract, so Chris Jones' contract starts applying the year after this year, if that makes sense. So, that's how they were able to afford him, but see, don't get it twisted. The Chiefs are definitely screwed down the line. They're not going to be able to afford any players. Not that they have any players that they really have to pay anytime soon, but still, they're going to be in situations where they have to cut key players to keep other players, so... Yeah, their whole cap space situation has, is just a big old mess. It kind of feels like they're trying to go all in again this one year. Because after that, they're done. Because that cap space has not been managed that well. Anyways, let's talk about what we're really here for. And that's my top five interior defensive linemen going into the 2020 season and i'm gonna start off with some honorable mentions like always and i have three this time around i have cameron hayward from the pittsburgh steelers now this guy is a very very good player i mean i can easily see why someone would put him in the top five but i personally think the other five are better than him the ones on my top five i mean this guy did dominate quentin nelson but as a Texans fan, I saw Jadavion Clowney dominate Quentin Nelson. I saw DJ Reader consistently dominate uh, Quentin Nelson. So it's really not that big of a thing in my opinion. Yes, like Quentin Nelson is known like as the best left guard. But, I mean, there's a lot of defensive linemen out there who could dominate Quentin Nelson or give Quentin Nelson trouble if we're being honest. And I feel like all five of the players on my list could take on Quentin Nelson one-on-one -on -one and win consistently not seeing Quentin Nelson's a bad player but you know still okay another honorable mention I just mentioned him right now DJ Reader I think DJ Reader is the best pure nose tackle in the NFL when it comes to stopping the run I don't think any other nose tackle even comes close but keep in mind I said he's the best run stopping nose tackle in the NFL so, you know, we'll get into that in a bit. And my other honorable mention is Fletcher Cox. Now, Fletcher Cox, very good player, don't get me wrong. But I just think the other guys on this list are better, but not by a lot. Now, if you want to put Cameron Hayward or Fletcher Cox in top five, that's completely fine. Because I feel like after the top two, it's like kind of anyone you know you could put anyone there i feel like these guys are really really close but the top two i feel like it's undeniable anyway let's move on to the actual list at five i have kenny clark from the green bay packers now when i mentioned dj reader i said he was the best run stopping nose tackle in the nfl but Kenny Clark is probably the best nose tackle in the NFL. He has something that DJ Reader doesn't, and that is the ability to rush the passer. Like, it's very, very hard to find a nose tackle that can actually get pressure on the quarterback. Like, most nose tackles are generally just big guys you know 315 plus pounds that just eat up blocks and stop the run that's what you get from your typical nose tackle but Kenny Clark is different because he is the rare nose tackle that can actually get pressure on the quarterback and if you found yourself one of those you are very very lucky because like I said you don't get a big heavy guy who can eat up blocks stop the run and rush the passer now obviously in my opinion dj reader is a better 
run stopper than Kenny Clark, but the fact that Kenny Clark can pass rush as a nose tackle, that puts him over DJ Reader, in my opinion. Now, coming in at number four, I have Mr. Grady Jarrett from the Atlanta Falcons. This guy is very, very good. If you're a Texans fan watching this, Max Sharping had a very good rookie year for us at the left guard spot. If there was one game where he really struggled, it was a game against the Falcons. Grady Jarrett is an animal. I believe he was like a fifth round pick in like 2015. So the dude was really slept on because apparently he was too small. But we don't care. I mean... The dude is a monster. He gets pressure on the inside. He can stop the run. Like, he is what you want in an interior defensive lineman. If Ross Blacklock can end up being as good as Grady Jarrett, then that was an amazing pick for the Texans. Anyways, moving on to number three, I have DeForest Buckner from the Indianapolis Colts. I really, really hate that the Colts traded for him because I absolutely love DeForest Buckner. I think he is somewhat of an underrated player. I feel like a lot of people clown the Colts for trading a first-round pick for DeForest Buckner, but I didn't clown that trade because DeForest Buckner is very, very good. I mean, like the other guys on this list, he gets constant pressure on the quarterback. He can stop the run. The dude is huge. I think he's like 6'7". Yeah, the, the dude is an absolute monster. And I am not looking forward for the Texans to be playing this guy twice a year. Because this is legit a guy who can wreck your game plan. But you know what? I trust Titus Howard, Zach Fulton, Nick Martin, Max Sharping, and Lermy Tunchel to keep Deshaun clean and keep running lanes open for... David Johnson and Duke Johnson so I'm not really that scared but still when your divisional opponent has a guy that good you know it's something to watch out for okay before we get to the top two interior defensive linemen in my opinion let me just say this I know some people are going to say what about Geno Atkins well if this was two years ago Geno Atkins definitely would have made the list but Geno Atkins is currently 32 years old. He's like on the, you know, backside of his career. So I'm definitely not going to include him in this list. Now, I was very close to putting him as an honorable mention. But I was like, you know what? I really shouldn't do that because even though he's good, I feel like most of these guys are a little bit younger, a lot younger. Well, except for one of them. He's a little bit older, older than I really thought honestly but yeah anyways Geno Atkins definitely a very good player but he is on the backside of his career okay now let's move on to number two second best interior defensive lineman and that is Chris Jones who just got a contract extension from the Chiefs I mean the dude deserved his money he is a very very good player he's good at stopping the run but even better at rushing the passer he is just an animal I only have one issue with him health there is times where he does get hurt and he misses some games if you recall the divisional round game Texans versus Chiefs Chris Jones did not play that game but you know obviously the Chiefs still won but Chris Jones is pretty much like the only good defensive player that the Chiefs have. I mean, you could say Frank Clark, but I see him more as average to above average. You can mention the little 5-2 cheerleader they have back there. No, he's overrated. But yeah, Chris Jones is like the only good defensive player that they have back there. So it was very important that they locked him up. And he's going to be there for what? five more years technically so yeah that interior defensive line of the Chiefs is going to be very good because of Chris Jones and at number one you guys know who this guy is one of my favorite players in the NFL Mr. 
Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald is by far the best defensive player in the NFL. Anyone who disagrees, I don't know what you're watching. If you guys remember J.J. Watt having that run from 2012 to what 2016? Well, Aaron Donald is probably the closest we're going to see to prime J.J. Watt. I mean, Donald is like a step below him because obviously he doesn't get the little passes bad at the line of scrimmage because he's like 6'1". But still, the dude is a dominant force in stopping the run. As a pass rusher, this dude got 20 sacks rushing from the inside. I mean, J.J. Watt did it back in what 2012 as well with Wade Phillips. But still, I mean, when you get an interior defensive lineman, get 20 sacks. That is very, very impressive. He's a two-time defensive player of the year. And I wouldn't be shocked if he won yet another one this year or the year after that or eventually in his career because the dude is just so good. He stays healthy. There's literally nothing wrong with Aaron Donald, man. The dude is like created in a lab type of thing, but not really because Aaron Donald was like the 11th overall pick. Why? Because he's 6'1". So just because he's 6'1", he didn't end up going sooner. And honestly, going back to that 2014 draft class when the Texans had the first overall pick, they picked Jadavion Clowney. And then like two, three years later, everyone was like, oh my God, they should have picked Khalil Mack. Khalil Mack is good. Personally, I never thought Khalil Mack was anywhere near as good as J.J. Watt or Aaron Donald. The pick should have been Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald is a future Hall of Famer. Khalil Mack hasn't done anything for a while, I feel like. He's kind of been silent. I don't think Khalil Mack is even close to Aaron Donald. Yes, Khalil Mack won a Defensive Player of the Year, blah, 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 blah. He was an All-Pro in two different positions, which was complete bullshit, by the way. But Aaron Donald is on a whole different level. Dude got 20 sacks rushing from the inside. The dude is an animal. And honestly, I think he's going to stay the best defensive player in the NFL for minimum three more years. He's 29. Like I said earlier, there's one player on this list who's a little bit older than I thought, and it's Aaron Donald. I didn't know he was 29. I thought he was like 27. But yeah, he has like three more dominant. I'm talking about flat out dominant, like got to double, triple team him type of stuff. But yeah. These are my top five interior defensive linemen in the NFL going into the 2020 season. Comment down below your own top five defensive linemen going into the season. And keep in mind, these are interior defensive linemen. So, you know, there's not going to be no Miles Garrett or, you know, other players like that. J.J. Watt. So, yeah, top five interior defensive linemen. And, yeah, be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.